It's, uh, it's entitled, And Be Not Conformed to This World. Be Not Conformed to This World. That word conformed, has it can be used in a good meaning or a bad meaning. We're going to read the scriptures at, at this time. But it's G4964. It's described as to fashion or the same pattern. To fashion or the same pattern. The same pattern. In Romans 12, what our brother read, verse 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of uh, of God. See, what, if you conform to this world, you can't prove what is a good and acceptable, perfect will of God because you're not living the life. Amen. You're going to be made to the fashion of this world, how the world thinks, how they talk, how they act, the denominational world, how they think, how they talk, how they act. When it comes to even salvation, you just have to believe that Christ is the Son of God and they just, everybody's saved. We're all saved. Mm -hmm. You know, you take them to the scriptures that show being born again, and it just goes over their head, one ear and out the other. Why? Because they're conformed to a certain belief system. The world is conformed to a certain pattern. Um, Saturdays, Fridays, the youth, they go out. You know, they get drunk, they get on drugs. This is their life. This is a pattern. that they Or they curse, even if they don't go out. You know, they have a, a pattern of how they speak. They curse, they get angry and, and punch walls. And this is their mindset. This is how they live. They lie to one another. They steal from one another. You know, this is not the mindset that Jesus Christ desires, desires for us. In Romans chapter number 8, Romans chapter 8, verse two, uh, 20, 28, the Bible says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among many brethren. This is what God desires, that he's planned this before the world began, predestinated us to be conformed to the image of his son. Again, that word conformed, the fashion or pattern. He wants us to look like a son, speak like his son, think like his son. It says, verse 28. To them who are the call according to his purpose. And that's a question you should ask yourself. Is my purpose doing the will of God? Is my purpose to be like the image of his son? That's the main purpose in his life. We know Ecclesiastes, we read this many times, 12, verse 12, verse 13 actually. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the evil thing that's a secret, it needs to be washed away. If it's a secret thing that's good, you'll be rewarded to judgment. But here we just read in Romans 8, we have to be conformed to the image of his son. The image of his son. All the brethren around, around the world that have the spirit of Christ have to be conformed to that same image. And the scriptures teach us how to think. And it removes the old fashioned. Uh, the old pattern of thinking so we can be made like his son in second corinthians chapter number 11 we read this many times where paul wrote to the corinthians the corinthians had a problem with conforming to that image they had a multitude of sins that paul had to constantly rebuke the saints of second corinthians chapter 11 verse 12 but what i do that i will do that i may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we, just like us. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no more for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to to their works see the works they can't lie and that word transform can be used in a good way or bad way but this greek definition g3345 
is uh, disguise or uh, transfigure. Disguise or transfigure. See, this is what Satan does and his servants. They disguise themselves as apostles of light or apostles of Christ or angels of light. But see, the end shall be according to their works. Their works can't lie. Even if they try to do works in secret, their works come out. Because the all-seeing eye, the God in heaven, is watching what's happening from above. He's watching the hearts. He's watching the actions that's happening on this earth. Amen. And the Bible says that every eye shall see him when he comes. We can't see him right now, but he can see us. And I was fishing yesterday. And uh, as I was fishing, I didn't even pay attention. But there was an alligator that was a few feet away. He was watching me. I didn't even see the rascal. But the idea is that when it comes to Christ, Christ has seen us all the time, 24-7. Now, when we see, every eye shall see him is when he comes, is when he returns. And so but we have to be ready on that day Amen. when he comes. Be not conformed to, to this world, the fashion, the pattern. And so there's a multitude of individuals that the influence is causing them to be conformed, the peer pressure. Adults, teenagers, doesn't matter what age, the peer pressure... It causes them to conform. They look for somebody to, to copy. Maybe this guy. Or look at magazines and celebrities. They look at the television. Well, maybe I should talk and be like him. Or maybe I should be like this individual. You know. And it's needful to look at the image of Christ to copy that image. You know, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And people seen Paul. They seen his example. And then they followed Christ. And they seen his image. They looked at his example. And this is... The mindset of the saint. First Peter chapter number four. First Peter chapter number four. The apostle uh, wrote in verse number one, first Peter four one. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin, that he no longer shall live the rest of his time in the flesh, to the lust of men, but to the will of God. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lasciviousness, lust, excess of wine, the Bible says revelings, banquetings, abominable idolatries. He's letting them know that's how you used to walk. This is who you used to be. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. See, as he's writing to, to the Gentiles, to the will, they, they were doing these things. Revelings, wine, banquetings, idolatries. This was their mindset. This was their life. And so because they repented, they were born again. Peter says, they think it's strange that you don't run in the same excess of right. They speak evil. Did you hear about John? Yeah, he talks about this Christ guy, this Jesus guy who resurrected from the dead. Resurrected from the dead. This is like this. This is a brand new thing for a lot of uh, a lot of individuals in the world uh, that Jesus Christ died, buried, and resurrected the son of God. And so they think it's strange. That's weird. We always worship Diana, queen of the Ephesians. We, all, we always worship this deity, this deity. So he left. He let go of this deity, this God. He knew that God since he was little, you know, and this is the mindset that that's weird, strange. He doesn't want to drink. He used to always get drunk. They used to offer up wine to some deities, too, and get drunk off the wine. Some Catholics still do that today, you know, and when you look at, you know, the transforming, you look at a show called the Transformers, you know, they would turn from. It was a fake show, fake cartoon. It was a movie. They made a movie out of it. But they would turn from a real robot to a, a real car in the, in the fake show. They got these things called, in this world, called transvestites, I believe. They turn, these are real individuals. Uh, now, they try to turn from a real man to a real woman. You know, it's like morph, like a pirate. It's morphing time. But the problem is that you can't turn... A real man to a real woman. It doesn't work. Now, in the fake cartoon, it's a real robot. And it turns into a real car. But it's also a fake show. But in the real world, you got real men trying to transform into a real woman. Or women trying to transform into real men. 
Now, on visually, they may try, but it's not, it's not going to work. You got these things called sporks. It's like spoon and a fork. You could pick food and then eat it and also, you know, which is two things. But it doesn't work with, with humans. You can't, you can't do it because God is not accepting that, that, that dual. He's not accepting that. You can't transform that and God accept it. Um, look at Second Kings, Second Kings uh, chapter number 16. It's a short time frame like our brother William mentioned this morning. We only have a few, few days here under the sun. And we'll be judged according to our works, as it mentions in Ecclesiastes, also mentions in Revelation. And we have to just be a prepared people. God is looking for a prepared people. And if you're not prepared, you'll be cast into outer darkness. Where there'll be weeping and gnashing, gnashing of teeth, you know. And, you know, in our adolescent days, uh, some of us would get hit with belts, shoes, uh, switches, you know, in the house when we acted up, that was weeping and gnashing in that time frame, right? In order to correct us, to guide us, to act right, but we don't want that to be our savior at the last day. We want us to maybe reprove us here while we're on this earth before we meet that final day of judgment so we can be prepared. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 16. 2 Kings chapter 16. Looking at verse... Uh, Look at verse number one. It says, In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign. He was a twenty-year-old and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, his God, like David his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and made his son to pass through the fire. According to the abomination of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children, before the children of Israel. Now, we have a multitude of gods. Molech was one of them. That had that doctrine or teaching to pass your children to the, through the fire. Manasseh was another king who passed his children through the fire. This was, this was a teaching that was spread, not just throughout Jerusalem, it was throughout the world because Jerusalem copied it from the world. So what did he do? He copied the pattern of that doctrine and brought it in to his actions, to his doings. Verse number four, and he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramali, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. At that time, Rezin, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria and drove the Jews from Elath. And the Syrians came to Elath and dwelt there unto this day. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath Pilisar, king of Assyria, saying, I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house, and sent it for a present to king of Assyria. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him. And the king of Assyria went up against Damascus and took it, care of the people of it, captive to cure, and slew Rezin. And king Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And king Ahaz sent to Urijah the priest, the fashion of the altar, and the pattern of it, according to all the work, manship thereof. And Uriah the priest built an altar according to all that King Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Uriah the priest made it against King Ahaz, came from Damascus. So here we have where Ahaz wants to make a copy. He conforms it, wants to conform it to the pattern of a false deity and bring it back. So when it comes to the church of Christ, we are, this is the pillar of the truth. This is the church Jesus died for, he bled for. This is his bride. There are some in the body of Christ that are conforming and want to conform the image of denominations and bring it to the church. The Catholics were the ones that spearheaded and started giving out to the community, food, medicine, to bring them in. To bring them in. 
And this is what's being copied by Churches of Christ mm. in the U.S. They're especially doing it. I found out some news. Mm. They're especially doing it in South America. Mm. Talk, talk to some saints over there. <laughs> and they think it's a normal thing. Mm. They, were talk, they were talking to me like I, something was wrong with me mm. because I wasn't accepting that doctrine. But they're not understanding that they received that from the Catholics. Mm. It, didn't, it never came from the Church of Christ. Mm. Never came. Matter of fact, in John, as we go quickly, quickly to John chapter number six, where when Jesus fed them, they later came back to try to get some more food, get some more bread. But Jesus did not want to give them uh, any more. This was something that was not for them. Look at verse number 25. When they had found him on the other side of the sea. They said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, You seek me not because you saw the miracles, but because you did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that with meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him had the God of had him had God the Father sealed. So he let them know. No, look for the eternal bread. Look for that bread that leads to eternal life. When he fed them, he fed the Jews, which were his people. Now you look at the New Testament, Acts chapter 11. They sent it, even though the whole world was going through a famine, they only sent the funds to the saints. Amen. Mm -hmm. You hear where the Philippians, they sent it to Paul for the ministry. And in Acts chapter 6, they sent... They, the money was for the saints that were widows, not all the widows in the world. And so when you look at these examples, um, the example of the church is not to give medicine and, and food to the community to, to try to bring them in. That's not how the fishing is done. That's not how the fishing is done. You know, because Christ is watching. You know, Christ is watching how we're fishing, just like the alligator was watching. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 16, looking at, back to verse number... 13, it says, and he burnt his burnt offering and his meat offering and poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. He brought also the brazen altar, which was before the Lord from the forefront of the house from between the altar and the house of the Lord and put it on the north side of the altar. And King Ahaz commanded Uriah, the priest, saying, Upon the great altar burn the morning burnt offering and the evening meat offering and the king's and the king's burnt sacrifice and his meat offering with the burnt offering. And all the people of the land and their meat offering and their drink offerings and sprinkle upon it all the blood of the burnt offering and all the blood of the sacrifice and the brazen altar shall be for me to inquire by. Thus did Uriah the priest according to all that King Ahaz commands. See, this is what he was not supposed to do. Uriah, the priest, was supposed to fight against this. Uh, just like they fought against Uzziah when he tried to light the incense. Those priests stood up boldly. They fought against him. It's not for you to do. It's not for your glory. But this priest wasn't fighting against Ahaz during this time frame. He was conforming the fashion, the pattern. The same pattern. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. If you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 28. 2 Chronicles chapter 28. You look at another example of Ahaz. In um, 28 verse 1. The Bible says. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Like David his father. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. Made also molten images for Balaam. I want to just stop here in verse 2. The ways of the kings of Israel. He is copying the same images. The same things that the other kings were doing. The same examples. Moreover he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. And burned his children in the fire. Children. After the abominations of the heathen. Whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also on burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. 
Verse 5, wherefore the Lord is God delivered him into the hand of the king of Assyria, and they smote him and carried him away, a great multitude of them captives, and brought them to Damascus, and he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah the son of Remaliah slew in Judah a hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were all valiant men, because they had forsaken the Lord God of their fathers. This is powerful, saints. Now, when we read in 2 Kings, it showed us some victories for Mahaz. Now, he's reaping what he's sowing because of his sins, of what he conformed to. Look at verse 7. And Zechariah, a mighty man of Ephraim, slew Messiah, the king's son, and Azricam, the governor of the house of Elkanah, that was next to the king. And the children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren 200,000. Women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. Look what's going to happen, though. Look what's going to happen. Because God is the judge of all men. Verse 9, but a prophet of the Lord was there, whose name was Oded. And he went out before the host that came to Samaria and said unto them, Behold, because the Lord God of your fathers was wroth with Judah, he had delivered them into your hand. And ye have slain them in a rage that reacheth up, reacheth up unto unto heaven. And look what it says in verse ten. And now ye purpose to keep under the children of Judah and Jerusalem for bond men and bond women unto you. He says, but are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Lord your God? That's powerful. That's powerful because even though he delivered them into their hands. The prophet is saying, why did you take them captive, though? Mm -hmm. See, they weren't supposed to take them captive. They were supposed to slay them, but not take the women, son, sons, uh, and daughters captive at this time. See, that's where they where they sin. And God is measuring and letting them know, isn't there sin also with you? Mm -hmm. Why? See, because they're, they're pulling off some foolishness by taking them captive. But God is at the same time measuring their hearts and, it, and letting them know, aren't you... Aren't you uh, still in sin as well? And God is looking at us for how we judge as well. You know, is there sin in, uh, with us when we judge? When we judge one another? In Leviticus 25, verse 39, the Bible says, And if thy brother that dwells by thee be waxen poor, and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. As a bond servant. And they, they took him as bond servants. They made him bond, bond men and bond women. Which they were not supposed to do. They were not supposed to do that. And so when you look at uh, John. Not John but. Uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. I want to look at something here. Because. The way we conform. Has to be according to the image of Christ. We can't conform. To the image of this world. Look at uh, Matthew. I want to look at chapter number. Chapter number 7 saints. Because that example that the prophet just mentioned to them, he says, they're not sin with you also. Look at Matthew chapter number, number 7. Judge not that ye be not judged. For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. That's what the prophet was telling them. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? How would I say to thy brother, let me pull out the moat out of thine eye, and behold, a beam, he says, is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. You see that? So he's not telling us to not judge at all, but he's telling us to first cast it out of our eye, then we'll be able to see it clearly. See, because they did what God wanted them to do in, in slaying them, killing them for their sin. But then they added another sin by making them bond servants. The women, children, and the, and the, and the men bond servants. As we read in 2 Chronicles 28. And so when it comes to the body of Christ, each individual, as we read in Revelation concerning Sardis, Jesus was mentioning he knows those that are walking in white. They will walk with me in white. And he knows at the same church which ones are not in sin. So what is God doing? God is measuring our hearts. He's measuring our mindset. 
if we're in sin or we not in sin. Look at Galatians chapter 5, Galatians 5 verse 16. The Bible says, this I say, then walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And so that's the question we should ask. Do we do these things or the is this on our heart? Lasciviousness, adultery, idolatry, witchcraft, Ouija boards. You go on pulling over the side of the road to the psychic. Let me just see what's going on. I got to find this out. I got to find out. Is my husband cheating on me? Let me ask the psychic. You know, is my wife cheating on me? You know, how about you talk to them? Ask them. Be transparent, honest with them. You know, and. Drunkenness is described, strife, wrath, hatred. We're going to talk about wrath here in, uh, in a few seconds here. Lasciviousness, uncleanness, envyings. Do you have envy in your heart? You know, whatever someone has that, that you don't have, whatever they have that you don't have, they can't keep it you know, forever. It's, it's only for this world. doesn't matter what it is. It's only for this world. Material, anything. Anything that you see that they have. They cannot keep it. It's going to be for this world. So why do you envy if they're, they're not even going to keep it? You should focus, put your treasure in the heavens. And so we desire to go to heaven. Verse 22, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such. There is no law, and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. They have crucified the flesh. So that should be on the, on the fruit of our tree. Joy, love, peace, long-suffering. Do you suffer long? Do you have long-suffering like Christ is long-suffering with us? That's the characteristics. Temperance, you have control of your temper, of your character, meekness. The Bible says, uh, it describes Moses. He was the meekest man in all the world. That's a powerful description. The meekest man in all the world. And there was a time frame in uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, there was no man like Job in all the world, you know, describes him like that, you know. And so when it comes to the character of Christ, we should at attach the characters of Christ to ourselves so we could have those characteristics as well. Proverbs chapter 13, Proverbs chapter 13, look at that verse 20. Proverbs 13, verse 20. <clears throat> The Bible says, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. See, automatic, automatic. It's, it's, if a homeless man is homeless by itself, he's going to be homeless by itself. He may ask for money, eat, have something to, you know, to stay alive. Mm -hmm. If a homeless man is with other friends, three or four, five, hangs out with them, they're all homeless together. Under the bridge, by a corner store. And then that homeless man starts to do what they do. If they smoke crack, crystal meth, mm. fentanyl. He's going to start being like them. Bold, bend over, just hooked on a drug. It's better for him to be homeless by himself. Amen. Instead of, now we go to verse 20. He that walked with wise men shall be wise. If you walk with wise men, you're going to be conformed and emulate how they talk, how they think. You're going to sharpen each other. You know, your scripture is going to come out. And that's how you're going to grow. By prayer is how you grow. Ask the Lord for wisdom. James chapter 1. And by being around other wise men and asking them. Sharpening one another up. That's how you get wise counsel. So you conform to the image of Christ more and more. Look at uh, Proverbs 26 verse 4. Proverbs 26 verse 4. 
The Bible says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like him. Lest also thou also be like him. You can be like him, conform to how he thinks. Keep going back and forth with him and how he thinks, and you'll try to match his mentality and how the fool speaks. Man, I got to get on his level to fight him. You know, that's what boxers do or MMA fighters. They try to go from MMA fighting to, to boxing. And it's, most of the time they get knocked out because they can't, they can't conform. But they try to. They try to conform to the same level. But, again, lest thou also be like him. You can be just like the guy you're talking to. Proverbs chapter number 22, verse 24. Proverbs 22, 24. The Bible says, Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways. And get a snare to his soul, mm. to thy soul, sir. So you can learn the ways of an angry man as well. Foolish man, angry man, you could be like him. Or you could be like the wise man in Proverbs 13. Now, when the man sees how angry he gets, oh man, he gets so much respect. Look how angry, angry he gets. Now, you may see that, and then you may emulate the same characteristics, and then you get a bullet in your liver, mm. right? Got, got a bullet next to your uh, next to your spleen, but the the one that you copied from, he has no bullet. No, it wasn't his time. It wasn't his day. Time and place happened to them all, and so it was a time where he tried to be like his friend because he was friends with him. I like how his character is. I want to be like him. Seems like he has respect, and then you know, now he's in the hospital. So you look at also. Uh, Look at Genesis chapter 4. Again, copy and paste. There's a lot of copy and paste. You know, that copy and paste mentality that a lot of people in the world copy and paste to themselves. In the church, they do the same thing. Genesis chapter 4, looking at verse 16. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife. She conceived, bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. And unto Enoch was born Erad, and Erad begat Mahujel, and Mahujel begat Methusel, and Methusel begat Lamech. So this is Cain's family. Verse 19, Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. This is the first time we got a man... Marrying two women. This is not the example God set forth. You know, God didn't have two ribs come out of Adam and he didn't make two women for Adam. He didn't do that. So, verse 20 And Ada bare Jabel, he was a father of such as dwell in tents, and of such have cattle. His brother's name was Jubal, he was a father of all such as handle the harp and organ. So, this is from his, uh, his wife Ada. The other wife, Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain and instructed every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister, and the sister of Tubal Cain was was Nama. Now these, this is where these occupations start popping out. Those that use harp, uh, artificer of brass, right? And Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and and Zillah. Look what he says. Hear my voice, ye wise of Lamech. Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a, a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt, he says. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. Why he said that? Why he said seventy and sevenfold? Because he killed two individuals. Two different individuals. Now, Cain is Lamech's great, great, great granddad. Great granddad. Methusel is his dad. Mahujel is his granddad. Ered is his great granddad. Enoch is his great, great granddad. This is his family. So you got a family. The murder, another murder popped out. Another murder popped out here in. Uh, in the generation time frame of Lamech. Now when you go to Genesis chapter 6 
Looking at verse 13, And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence. The earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. This is powerful. Because now you got Cain who killed his first his brother. You got another murder, uh, which is Lamech, came through the family line. By the time you get to Genesis 6, the Bible says the earth is filled with violence. It's already full. You got a copy and paste example conforming to the example of Lamech and Cain. It's just duplicated. Everybody start conforming. Just kill them. What do you want to do with them? Man, just, just kill them. And then it was filled. So what did God do? He showed Noah grace. And then he destroyed the world with water at this time frame. The next time Jesus returns, he's going to destroy the world with fire. Destroy the world with fire. Look at Galatians chapter number 2. Galatians chapter number 2. Looking at verse 11, we read the story concerning Paul when he met with the apostles. Galatians 2.11 says, But when Peter was come to Antioch, I was stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. You see that? That word dissimulation is described as hypocrisy. Peter's acting like a hypocrite, so I'm going to act like a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Barnabas is saying, I want to be like that too. Mm -hmm. Now Barnabas is a faithful saint. He's the one that introduced Paul to the saints in Jerusalem. And now he's copying the example. He's conforming to the example of Peter. And Peter is showing not, is not showing an example of Christ. And so the hypocrisy can be copied, saints. That's why you have to ask the question. A question we should always have in our hearts is, where is that in the Bible? Where is that in the scriptures? Can you show me that in the scriptures? If you have that, when you hear things, Remember that question. Where is that in the Bible? Any subject. Whatever it is. Taxes. Marriage. Children. Uh, whatever it is. You know, The Bible has an answer for it. The Bible has so much personalities that can match this world's personalities. Politicians. Teachers. Whatever. Whoever it is. Whoever you meet. Their character personality can match the, the per personality in the Bible. So you can see and compare them to the scriptures to see what they're like. See, when it comes to the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we are not the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But He gave us His Holy Spirit in order to give us His thoughts, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And because He wants us to have His thoughts through His Word, now we're able to measure how the, the heart of man is, how our heart is. In order for us to maneuver through this life and don't get caught into a snare. Galatians 2.14 But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. I said unto Peter before them all. If thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles and not as do the Jews. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Who we who are Jews by nature not sinners of the Gentiles. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, we, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For if I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me, 
gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Why is he telling the Galatians this? Put in the dirt, put in the dirty laundry of Peter. All out there. Because the Galatians need to see an example that the law has been done away with. Don't let any leader, especially Peter, or any other Jew, deceive you. That's why he says in verse uh, chapter 3, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Don't be conformed to the way of the Jews anymore. The law of Moses has been crucified to the cross. Don't be conformed to that image uh, anymore because Jesus removed that uh, from our doings and our actions. You look at 1 Kings chapter number 12 where you have this king who God set up. He set him up perfectly. He was going to bless him. But again, fear creeps into the heart. Fear creeps into the heart. Ideas start bubbling. And then you have actions that come afterward. 1 Kings chapter 12. Verse 25, Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim, and dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and built Penuel. Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their Lord, even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they shall kill me. And go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel, made two calves of gold, and said unto them, It is too much for you to go to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. He set the one in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. And this thing became a sin. For the people went to worship before the one even unto Dan. You see that? And Dan and in Bethel, two golden calves. This thing became a sin. So all the people started doing it. They started conforming. They didn't ask questions. They said, is this a sin or not? They just said, okay, let's do it how you want it to be done. Ahaz did the similar thing when he built the altar that he copied. There's a copy and paste mentality in the scriptures in the Old Testament. There's a copy and taste mentality in the New Testament and here today. Why do we conform? Because we want to be like those who we adore instead of adoring Christ, who is our captain, our savior, and the leader that is to lead us unto eternal life. Look at First Kings, uh, Second Kings, chapter number ten. Second Kings, chapter number ten. This influence was so powerful. That it even caught one of the great kings that was set up who destroyed a lot of the children of Baal. Look at first, uh, Second Kings 10, 25. Now what Jehu did, he's rounded up all the worshippers of Baal. He pretended that he was a, a worshipper of Baal. And he slayed a lot of these false worshippers. Verse 25, it came to pass... As soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in, slay them, let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. And they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burned them. And they break down the image of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it and draw house unto this day. Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. Yeah. That's powerful what he did. It's almost like it's almost like saying, you know, anybody who believes that you don't need baptism to be saved, just ask the Lord to be your heart, be in your heart, be your Lord, be your Savior. Come to this room. And then everybody in the church of Christ that believes that you don't got to be baptized to be saved, you put them in one room. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus returns and they get slain. And so when it comes to what Jehu did, he did something similar, put all the individuals that worship Baal, and he did the same thing. But, look what he did in verse 29. This is why I'm talking about influence, conforming. Verse 29, how be it? From the sins of Jeroboam, 
the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu, departed not from after them. To wit, the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. And the Lord said unto Jehu, Because thou hast done well in executing that which is right in mine eyes, and hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord of God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. And it say he was going out running women, getting drunk. It said he just didn't stop worshiping in Dan or in Bethel. And we read in the book of 1 Kings 12 that this came from Jeroboam's mindset. What Jehu did, he conformed to this image and he believed it as true. He believed that there was nothing wrong with this image. There was nothing wrong with it. You know, the images that are in our heart have to be approved by God. Do not let the world change what God made. In Romans 1 21, because that when they knew not, they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Change and change and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, change the truth of God into a lie, worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. We got these images in India, in Egypt, with Ten different hands, purplish color, bluish color, got the head of a goat. Verse 26, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the women burn in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly. And receiving themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. When it comes to this world, in the U.S., they desire that you agree to this type of actions. They want you to participate at different work events. They want you to praise uh, these type of LGBTQT communities and their belief system. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God. In their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. See, that's why we have to retain God in our knowledge. Because he can give us over to a reprobate mind. It doesn't have to be homosexuality. He, he says a list in verse 29, filled with all unrighteousness or fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, Murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them see th this is the things that God hates this is the things that mankind is full of it's a 71% divorce rate I believe in the United States that's the number one in the in the whole world 71% divorce rate was the percentage that was given that's a huge number not 50 40 70 and here it says verse 31 covenant breakers the vow that was given the vow that was given you know i believe i've seen a, a marriage a marriage uh vow a few days ago where the woman was standing getting married 
and the minister was telling her, rich or poor, she had a problem with that. And then he she, he mentioned, or oh, to obey your husband, she had a problem with that. She didn't she wanted to repeat that. He had to say, uh, he had to mention unto her. We discussed this in counseling during the wedding. What we talk about. That? She didn't want to repeat that, and so the mindset has been corrupted. You know, lovers of their own selves. It's a me mentality. It's a conforming mentality. They're like the Athenians. You know, when you look at Acts chapter number 17, it shows you what the Athenians were like in that time frame. <clears throat> in Acts 17, Acts 17 verse 21, For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but, to, but either to tell or to hear some new thing. I just want to find out what's new. You know, I just want to know what's going on. You know. You know, and there's a multitude of scriptures that show from the Old Testament to the New of individuals just trying to conform to the image, to the image of the world. Many are called, few are chosen. The Bible says there's going to be few that find eternal life. When we go to Matthew, let's go to Matthew. Go to Matthew chapter number 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it, saints. Few there be that find it. There's only going to be a few that make it in. Don't be conformed to this world. Proverbs 18, verse 2. The Bible says, A fool had no delight in understanding. The Bible says, But that his heart may discover itself. The heart may discover itself. It wants to figure out, Man, what can I, what can I be like? Who can I be like? So they copy different personalities in the world. And there's some good traits and personalities in the world. Not everybody has evil traits. Because remember, we were born with the character of God. But again, like the Bible says, they've corrupted themselves with man. And so the heart wants to discover itself and find out, where, well, who can I be? Maybe I could be like this. I could, I could cur curse like this comedian. Uh, I could do violence like this entertainer. Uh, I could beat my wife like, like this man did. Uh, just a couple times. Um, I can do drugs just a little bit. You know, this one guy, <laughs> he mentioned a few days ago. <clears throat> he said, I only, I'm on, I need a detox. He said, I need to do, I'll do drugs maybe a few days and then I'll stop. Because he has a fear. He doesn't want to be like a crackhead on the side of the road. So he has a fear. So he has, a, he manages his sin. They call them sin managers. Uh, in order to... Because they don't want to, they see the crack, the guy they're doing crack, I said, I don't want to go to that level. So let me detox, then do drugs, then detox a few days, then do drugs, in order to manage his sin. Sin managers, you know. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed, saints. That's the lesson. For those listening, understand that Jesus Christ, he died, he buried, resurrected according to the scriptures. Isaiah 53 Isaiah tells a prophecy of how he was going to die, what he was going to die for. He was going to give up his soul and offering, an offering for sin. And because he died on that cross, he took our place. Our sins were placed upon, upon his flesh. And his resurrection, in Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And you may say, well, I've already been baptized. I don't got to get baptized again. There is a minister that's teaching in the Church of Christ. He's teaching falsely. That if you... 
been baptized in the Baptist church. You don't got to get baptized in church Christ. Man. Well, that's a lie. Because the, ch the Baptist church, they don't have the Holy Spirit there. So the person dipping you is just getting you wet. So Matt, Acts 19, verse 1, And it came to pass that while Paul was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They are like, What is a Holy Ghost? What is that? You know? And he said unto them, Unto the what then were ye baptized? They said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John ready to baptize with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, John's baptism did remove sin, because in Mark, Mark chapter 1, verse 4 says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance. For the remission of sins. Mark chapter 1 verse 4. So it did remove sin. But it did not give you the Holy Ghost. So they had to get baptized again. To have sins removed. And get the Holy Spirit. So the Jehovah's Witness baptism. Methodist baptism. Baptist baptism. You don't get no forgiveness of sins. And you don't get the Holy Ghost. At all. The bat John's baptism was put away. And now you have the baptism. For Christ to get the Holy Spirit. But first, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is a son, is a son of God. Amen. You have to believe the gospel. In Acts chapter 15, verse, th verse 7. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. See, first you got to believe. Acts 17, looking at verse 30, it says, and the, and, and the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now, now, commanded all men everywhere to repent. To repent. So you have to believe. And then now he's commanding men everywhere to repent. See, now is not back then. 1 Peter 3, looking at verse 21, the like figure wherein to even baptism does now, also now, save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the res resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, now is where one has to be born again. We're not living under the time frame of Moses, where we have to do animal sacrifices. We're not living under the time frame of where John's baptism is in effect, now baptism is what saves. And for those listening to my voice, understand before Christ returns, you have to put on Christ's baptism. Galatians 3.27, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Peter let them know in Acts chapter number 2, verse 36, he told them in this specific verse, Therefore let all the house of Israel know, Surely, that God has made that same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Sent to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter sent to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is still given today. Sinner's prayer is not in the scriptures, nowhere in the Bible. Do you have anyone saying the sinner's prayer? In the book of Acts, chapter number 8, we have where Philip is talking to the eunuch. And he tells the eunuch in verse number 36, they went on their way, came to a certain water. The eunuch said, See, here is water. What did hinder me to be baptized? If thou believe with all thy heart, thou mayest. He answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. When he commanded the chariot to stand still, they went down both into the water both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. For those listening, you can be born again baptized. We'll guide you through the scriptures if you're in another city or state. So you can be born again. Jesus will wash away your sins, give you his spirit. You just have to be faithful, faithful to death. At this time, we'll be closing, saints. God loves you. Continue to stay faithful. We'll be closing with a song and a prayer. Amen. And tender.